And today we will be talking about SketchUp and how you can transition into ARCHICAD and uh, harness the power of BIM. Uh, so just a little bit about me. I'm a BIM consultant providing training and implementation uh, throughout the Midwest and based out of Chicago. But there's one of me in your region. So uh, at the end of this webinar, uh, there will be some contact information for me, but you will also be contacted by your local representative. Just a couple things before we begin. Uh, this presentation is copyrighted. Of course, if you have any questions, you can enter them in the questions bar. We will be sure to email and follow up with you. Uh, or if you have any questions about this presentation, I'd be happy to answer any of those. Uh, also, before we just jump right in, if you're having trouble hearing me, uh, make sure that you have selected an audio option. So if you're using your computer audio, please make sure your speakers are turned up. Uh, you are uh, automatically muted. Also, if you're on the phone call, make sure to enter that audio pin. And if you're having trouble hearing me, it may be best if you're on the phone to just hang up and call again or try to quit and start again. All right, so a little bit about us, who we are, Graphisoft. We have been working with BIM for well over 30 years now. Our very first release featured actual windows and doors. Uh, so we have been working a long time and it's been a software that's been developed by architects for architects. And uh, you'll see a lot of the flexibility of design uh, that's intended in that uh, by the way that we were developed. Uh, if you have any questions about platforms, today I will be working off of a Mac. However, we work on Mac and PC as well as Android and iOS devices. Uh, as a matter of fact, via our teamwork, our collaboration method, uh, even if you are on a Mac and someone else is on a PC, you guys can work together. So we are platform agnostic. All right, so today we're going to be talking about how you can get a seamless workflow. And I'm talking about starting with schematic design, all in one project, all in one software, all in one place, and taking that through into construction documents. Uh, so we will be focused on how you draw within ARCHICAD, how you begin to edit uh, in real time in 2D and 3D in section views. Uh, but all the while, you know, what's most important, we want our construction document. So a part of the building information model or our BIM model is that we are able to extract our construction documents from it. And of course, presentation materials, ways to communicate our ideas. Uh, there are several outputs from ARCHICAD that you can get automatically that will give you either 3D walkthroughs or renderings. Uh, and you can do various studies as needed. So you can find everything you need here and we'll be covering uh, quite a few of those. Okay, so uh, the value of BIM, what we're talking about here, why we are talking about it at all is because we have a need to save time as we get uh, compensated as, as it relates to our time. Uh, but the value of BIM is not only that it saves time, but also that it reduces risk. So we will be working in this format where we will be building this model and all of the documentation will be updating, all of the annotation can be updating, and this is just one way to save uh, time in the office in terms of the amount of time that we typically spend on construction documents in our 2D workflow. So we're going to shift a lot of that, that to the front end of the project, but as a result, it'll allow us to manage any changes within the project very easily uh, and also save us some money. If we can save some money before it gets built, uh, that would definitely be great as well. So I'm just going to dive in. So before I draw, uh, I do want to introduce this interface to you. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have our toolbox featuring our design tools, our 3D intelligent tools. We also have our documenting tools for annotation here. We have a category called more. Uh, please note that all of our uh, workspaces, all of our icons and shortcuts or uh, what exists here can be modified to fit your own needs. Uh, we have custom workspaces that you may use as well. So 
once I select one of these tools, any one of these tools, this top bar populates, this is my info bar. It gives me a quick summary of the tool, such as what layer it's on, how I'll be drawing it, uh, as well as what is a part of that wall and height, etc. Now, so you can find a lot in the info bar as it relates to the tool that'll help you edit on the go. Uh, however, you can also double click to enter the default settings of any tool and you'll see more and more options that are available. Uh, for constructing uh, and setting up your elements. Now on the right hand side you're going to see me click here quite a bit. Uh, this is our navigator. This is how we're going to move through the project. Uh, so I want to start from left to right. It kind of speaks to workflow. Uh, we have our project map and these are all the types of views that you need for a project. So of course you're going to be building your building. It consists of stories, sections, elevations, interiors, schedules, etc. So these are all of the source views of the uh, elements that we can create in ArchiCAD. And we can add all of our information here, but at a time we're going to want to filter that model uh, so that it only shows a particular amount of information. So for instance, uh, this is called my view map. If I open up my view map view, check out one of these and go into its settings, I can see that each one of these, yes, is using that source view. We can customize the name because I might need a first floor plan electrical, a first floor plan demo, uh, et cetera, right? So we know that there's multiple layers of information we need to show. So what's a part of a view? We have layer combinations, those group like layers together. When I'm building an ArchiCAD, I'm drawing two scale and one to one. So if it's a 10 foot wall, I'm going to draw it as such, but I can change my scale at any time. Uh, later, we're going to talk about our composites, our smart, intelligent walls. We can always parse them out. So if you're working with any structural engineer, you only send them the core elements or maybe the low bearing elements of your model. And just moving through a couple of these, model view options deals with level of detail, graphic overrides, maybe you want to apply a poche to the walls, or maybe you want to highlight a specific amount of information, graphic overrides can be pretty useful for that. And then we have our renovation filter, so especially great for anyone who's renovating any projects where every element can be set to a status of new to be demolished and uh, also existing and as a result of that status will show graphically correctly as needed. So we'll, we'll come back a little bit to these views but we're aiming for this. Our third tab, our layout book. So this has to do with our construction document and I will note in the development of this. Now ArchiCAD out of the box comes with uh, some of these elements however uh, you do want to modify it to your needs. If you know every project consists of several floor plans and sections uh, and, and several pages of that, add those into your um, project so that you can pre-place those filtered views and you already know what you'll be expecting. And then lastly here, our publisher, of course we need to get this out. I can always batch publish this to PDF, um, BIMX Pro, which we're going to talk about last, a portable 2D and 3D environment where you can explore or have your client explore your project. IFC for anyone who's working with any other BIM software or perhaps an engineer, Revit MEP or Revit Structure. Uh, that's what you would use to kind of speak to each other. And yes, we still work with DWGs. And also just for the purposes of this uh, um, webinar, I've set up a, a folder because you can also batch render things as needed. So um, let's go back to our floor plan. And how do you start your project? Do you start with a sketch? Do you start just getting into the software? So I want to talk about the couple different ways we can start our project. Now I'm going to open up a worksheet. Uh, worksheets are really good for introducing some of that information. It's reference materials, survey maps, maybe um, images of the building. Uh, it can accept multiple formats. So I just want to uh, open up my new worksheet here. And no matter how you start, be it with a sketch or a DWG or a PDF or whatever you have, uh, you can begin to get it by dragging and dropping it. So I'm going to open up my finder here and I have a couple sketch images. I can just grab any JPEG, PNG, etc. and just drag it and drop it into my screen. So if that's the case, you know, maybe you've drawn your sketch to scale, maybe not. 
uh, but there are ways to scale that up as needed. Uh, maybe you start with a DWG. So even if it's a DWG, you can drag and drop that DWG in here. Of course, there's a scale associated with it. So we can go ahead and place it. And this can be used as a trace reference. So what I might do with this, and I've moved it closer to the origin point, uh, is go out to my first floor and show that as a trace reference. Oops. Go out to my first floor show this as a trace reference and begin building. I believe, oh, here it is over here. So I can draw directly over top of this. It Even as a quote unquote block, it has points that I can access. Uh, however, I can also explode this DWG as needed. So just know that no matter how you start, you can get started here. So if you jump into the software, let's start there. So maybe I'll turn my trace reference off Maybe you start with some general shapes, just some lines, and you can draw with your polyline or line tool, maybe define it. I'm going to uh, dimension this to be, let's say, 55 by 45 feet. I only need to start typing in order to enter these values. So I can enter them here. I'm using my tab key in order to move through that. And we can work from that there. I'm going to add on another wing. What we'll be designing here today will be a live workspace, uh, architectural office. Um, so um, I have space for office space. I'll be building a conference room. But maybe you just start with this, uh, these few things and dimensions as a part of how you develop your plan. Now that's something, but it's not yet in 3D. So enter the morph tool and we use the morph tool for several reasons. You can use it to edit other elements, but you can also use it to very quickly start massing uh, within your project. So I'm just going to use my magic wand, which is a trace. I can access that by clicking on the tool and then spacebar clicking. Basically, I'm just forming faces right now and I don't have to do this. We can definitely come out here and push and pull uh, and, and, and do whatever we need in that way as well. I'm just going to take a moment to turn my layer on. I think I have it turned off in this view, but we just have our faces here. So we can always come here and make some decisions, click on those faces and make them, uh, you know, a certain dimension. So I'm going to make mine uh, 30 feet. Maybe I want this mass to be 12 feet. So I'm just clicking on these faces. Maybe I want this one to be eight. Now, manipulating it uh, as far as massing, very familiar with what you might know. It's all about node, nodes and edges. Uh, I can change these edges. The great thing is that it's grouped, uh, so it always works together. Uh, so I can begin, you know, messing with, you know, the, 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 the geometries of my model in this fashion. Uh, of course, I can come and add faces, uh, you know, use more like a tube command. Uh, add openings as needed, but you can freely model. And even as a part of a schematics design, I want to open up my surface painter. Uh, we introduced this just for that purpose so that you can come in here, start to get some results. And uh, ArchiCAD comes with over uh, 500 surfaces and you can always create your own, but you can come and start to uh, add these elements. And you can do a quick search. A search will reveal that there are other elements that are available to you as far as uh, other materials that you can quickly work with. Let's just start here. And the beauty of this, uh, we're just painting a couple things here, but the beauty of this is that, you know, clients want to see a lot of changes early. Maybe you have not been prepared to do that just yet. So even in this state, in a schematic massing state, I could take these elements all of the surfaces that I'm using in them become available down below here. And if I need to make any quick replacement, say I want a new brick, and you know our clients, they'll focus on the, the uh, finishes and say, oh, that's not what I expected. So you can select the finish that you want, the surface that you want, and then reapply it or add it to your model. So it helps you get a lot of ideas out in schematic design as well. Now, not only is this just a mask that we're working with, uh, we can also develop schedules uh, in order to com accommodate that. So these are considered morphs. Uh, I've created a schedule called Massing Square Footage by Morphs, 
and I can tell you what each one of those is, uh, as well as how many uh, square feet per uh, area. So right now, it's, we're going to go back to schedules, but it's really about forming criteria. So I told it to find uh, all of the morphs uh, and add some kind of information uh, to that. So uh, that's one way. Now, let's talk about getting started in ARCHICAD. Let's get the intelligence in the model. And so I'm just going to go back to 3D. I'm using F3 and F2 to toggle. And I'm just going to turn off the morph for now. So let's go back to floor plan. Even still using this structure or maybe drawing from scratch, I can enter my wall tool. And in my wall tool, I'm going to start with a schematic composite, one that assumes that there is a framing and also a finished component. So I can uh, very quickly uh, come here and start tracing. Now, I don't have to trace. I'm going to show you an easy way. But the one thing about working in ARCHICAD, you never have to start and start, uh, stop and start over to create different geometries. We have our handy little pet palette, uh, pet palette because it, it kind of follows me around. Uh, but I can use this to form different shapes. I can take my backspace and delete. Uh, button to make sure I go back to the last place in the line so I'm never limited in geometries but also using this continuing our workflow uh, I can use that magic wand which is a spacebar click uh, in order to place uh, said walls so let's do that I'll spacebar click in my masses here and I know we've got a little bit of overlap so we can get rid of some of that I'm just command clicking to get rid of those elements and then we can turn our lines off if we like. So very quickly, within a matter of moments, I'm able to get walls that are just really waiting for me to uh, add more information to it. I also turn my morph layer off. So let's continue uh, in developing our project. Uh, one thing that people use in order to develop their project are guidelines. So I'll turn these on. We have our permanent guidelines, which you can use to, to drag uh, inside the screen. So say you want to set up a grid or maybe you just want to start drawing, but I want to kind of cover you know, all of your possibilities here. So I can start bringing these guidelines in, bring in copies of them at whatever increments that I'm looking uh, towards developing. And maybe I also want to uh, develop them in, a, uh, in, in this development as well. And so kind of building our, our part T diagram, I guess, so to speak. Uh, in in figuring out the structure of our model. So you might decide to use these. I'm just going to start with these few, and we're going to draw some interior walls. Now, you may have noticed I never went into the settings for the wall. Uh, I never saw, uh, excuse me one second. I never, okay, yeah, any questions I will be answering at, uh, you know, probably in an email or at the end of this if we have time. So you'll notice that uh, as I am uh, developing these, I never, I never set this up. And that's one of the beauties. You can come in here and start sketching, but it could be with real information. So one of the things that's set up in this file already, uh, and we can take a look at it, is that story height. Uh, so I can right click there. The shortcut is Command 7 or Control 7. This is defined my story heights. I could change it at any time. And the good thing is that my walls are linked to that. And that way... You know, they'll change if anything changes within the model. Uh, so we've got our basic walls here. Let's also start to draw some interior walls. I want to introduce favorites. Uh, if you do something very often, uh, you can introduce a favorite so that you don't have to set things up every time. So maybe I just want to draw these, these interior walls. I can flip them. I think I'll also draw a couple here. So you can set things up, but part of what's going to make you more efficient is developing uh, your template to uh, get all of your expected needs. So we have a couple interior walls now, and uh, let's continue there. So let's take a look at that in 3D. It's coming along, always developing and updating in 3D. All right, so we can always turn those guidelines off if need be. Uh, you know, they're kind of a, a reference point for me. Uh, but you don't you don't always need it so I'll press L to turn them off uh, you can stretch walls and elements by grabbing their nodes uh, you can do that in any view whether it's 2d or in 3d 
I uh, think if you wanted to make an edit, just as far as editing in ArchiCAD, just to show the flexibility within 3D, uh, I can select any of these walls. And right now, if I want to add in extra nodes, I can grab that reference line, grab that blue line, and then offset the edges. As long as these things are working, uh, or excuse me, are adjacent, uh, they will be working together. So you can add a quick addition uh, to your project in this fashion. Now let's continue to develop it. Now we know we can go back and surface paint this, but we want to talk about the development uh, of our model. So now that we have our walls, a couple interior walls, let's go ahead and place our floor slab. Uh, I can, in any of these tools, once again, go into the dialog, choose from some of the pre-selected composites. You can also create any custom composite. Uh, right now, I'm just going to work a lot with favorites for the sake of time here. Uh, but I will choose my concrete 4-inch slab on grade. Now, yes, I can come here and trace or build this as a square, just as I could any of my other tools. Uh, but I can also use that trace tool, that magic wand, uh, in order to ensure that I uh, get that same structure. So uh, we have several different uh, elements at play here. Some people like to do this before they place the interior wall, um, the interior uh, elements just to make it a little bit easier for them. Uh, you may have noted I didn't set these up, but you could always do beforehand, right, to go to be on an interior la layer. Uh, which will allow you to, you know, select and very quickly decide what's what, you know, what you need to take out. So maybe you want to turn those off, maybe not, but you, using your magic wand, once again, it's just a trace tool, and I am able to place uh, my slab in these areas. And just to show you the other method, you can always just drag, and you can be specific about where it's ending to in terms of where it ends on this wall. So very quickly, we should have our floor slabs there. Now, let's continue right along. Uh, maybe we want to add a little bit of structure. Uh, we have column and beams. Now, it's up to you to do the calculations. Uh, ArchiCAD is not calculating for you. Uh, but let's say you want to add a couple columns. It's easiest placement here. But before we do that, why not switch our walls? I, I think we're okay with this. We understand the concept. You can start with a basic wall with the skin, but we want to move into more detail, uh, a more detailed model. So I'm going to select all of my exterior wall, which, yes, I can shift and click, but I want to use my find and select. Uh, and using this, I can take criteria such as layer or height or actually just about anything and pick it up so that I can select all of that element. And I'm going to switch this composite now to one of our pre-created composites, but I'll show you how quickly you can change it. Uh, wall brick CMU, uh, let's see, 14 and a half here. So very quickly I'm able to change that. Now this is a change that happens everywhere, so it's not just in 3D, but it also occurs in plan. And let me turn my interior walls back on. But we can start to see they also start to connect in terms of materials and how they join. So just in a matter of seconds, we've gotten quite a bit of intelligence uh, within our model. Now, uh, continuing right along, and we can check out our 3D there if we like. Uh, let's go ahead and place those columns. So yes, we have a system. You could build a grid system and place them all at once. Uh, however, I just want to kind of place them manually to expose some of our other tools. I can take this one column, and maybe I don't know what the spacing should be across here. But I can use my multiply command, command U, and tell it to distribute, you know, three more copies till it gets to that edge, or maybe off of the edge, or maybe I define a distance. But we're just going to do the edge there. And so then, using that, I can grab the end of that and uh, create, oh, it depends on where you click, so I do want to make sure I'm clicking on the correct point, just the end of my column there, and I can use those to create very quickly. I could also take those and drag copies, so uh, ways that we can very quickly get started here uh, within our model. You can always place them directly, go back and replace them, but there's 
like I say, you can set up the system from the beginning if you want to, or you can place them one at a time. But we have our uh, columns there as well. So similarly, uh, we can draw our beams. Uh, so I'm going to just draw a couple beams here. We'll turn them on. They weren't initially on. It's just letting me know that they might go above because they are above my floor plate. So they're there. We'll draw them as in, ours in a project. You can start to see it take place. But now we're beginning to work here. So let's continue to build this model. So uh, let's add some windows and doors finally, right? We've got some structure going. We've got some spaces. Uh, I'm not going to go into the settings for it just yet because you don't have to. And I think one of the popular misconceptions is that you have to set so much up first uh, before you start drawing. So let's just say uh, you start with a uh, just a generic door, generic exterior door, maybe a storefront or something like that. Uh, but at very least, I can tell it's three foot by seven foot. But I'll show you all the settings that are available for this. So I can come in and start drawing uh, my door elements. Basically, it's looking for that outside face or that reveal side. Uh, and then I can choose my swing. So you'll notice when I'm placing, I can place it along the center point. That's my anchor point. So I choose that, and I can choose my swing. So let's add other uh, couple things, couple couple other rooms here. I actually cut this out. So as far as spacing, I'm thinking entry, lobby, office, private office, conference, other. So we're getting there. Uh, so we have a couple doors. Uh, let's also uh, place a couple, and, and you see how favorites can really come in to play for you. And just so you know, these are favorites that are uh, existing in the template. And so it doesn't have to be a double hung door. There are sliding doors, excuse me, a, a double door or a double hung window, which we're about to place, but there are a number of sliding uh, and different elements that are available as well. So maybe you want double doors into the conference room. Now, I know that we didn't set this up and that's because you don't have to, but there's so much that you can see as a part of all of our components. Our interfaces are pretty, pretty friendly about it where I can see the values as I change them. I can see what it looks like in plan and in 3D. And then I have all these other values that I can change. So let's do this. And I'll teach you guys how to save a favorite. I'm going to go into my window tool and I just want to start placing a couple of storefront windows. Once again, I can't use my distribute command. Uh, or if I need to find this point, I have this handy little control box there that uh, I can use to either define particular divisions uh, within this element. So maybe I, maybe I divide this wall into three, three equal segments uh, or more, you know, so you can use these as guides uh, as well. So I just want to grab my window here. I'll start to place just a couple of my windows. Windows two have a swing because of the flexibility and the understanding that you might at any point decide that you need to change that window to a sliding window. So it needs, you know, some kind of reference. So I'm just going to place a couple simply because we want to take a look at our elevations and they have something joyous to see. Uh, we can even select a number of corner windows. So don't think you're, you're ever, you know, limited in terms of the type of windows that you can get. Uh, and I did note that there are several uh, other ones available for ArchiPlus members, but we can very quickly place these elements. Now they're all going to a schedule. I'll check those out later. Uh, but we got several windows here. Let's check it out in 3D. All right, we're coming along nicely. So uh, in the development my model, I noted you know we didn't set it up. How you set up a favorite for any tool? Basically, you can you can. Get it here. I want it, I want you to be aware that you may look at the library and think, oh, that's not enough. But within every component, there are multiple uh, iterations of what something can be. So let's say you just you just had a double hung window because we have something for everyone. Within this dialog box, I can control everything about it. I have dialogues that reflect what I'm changing. I have sash op options. I can create custom sash options. You don't have to go through all of these elements. But this is the intelligence of the model. Uh, and things that you can add or decide whether it shows depending on uh, level of detail. You don't have to do this every time. 
But then, as I noted, favorites are awesome, so you can come and save your favorite. And then this definitely helps you out for not only quick placement, but also for office standards for offices of two, uh, offices from two to 20. Uh, so it keeps everyone on the same page as well. And then uh, that becomes a part of your list. And barely, you can just come in, uh, you know, double click to add it to your model. So very quickly, favorites for any tool, walls, windows, doors, etc., can definitely be your friend. So we've got our interior walls. Uh, we've got our favorites here. Let's do our second floor. So here's where trace reference can become helpful. So I can see my second floor, but I really need to know what's going on on my first floor, right? So I can right click on this element to show it as a trace element. And from this trace, I have an eyedropper. It's like a match parameter, match parameters. I could use that and it's the alt click or option click to simply come and start drawing, you know, or trace elements that I see below. But once again, if there's an easy button, I'm going to take it. So uh, we can also use and edit or uh, edit elements by stories. Yes, you can copy and paste, but the trouble with that is, is as your project grows, you may not have everything that you need selected. So in this case, we want to perform this operation. And what we will do is copy all of these elements from the first floor up to the second floor. Now, one thing to be aware of this uh, with this is that uh, your doors and uh, windows are associated with your walls, so you either want to build a balcony, right, or or get rid of, uh, you know, get rid of your walls to nowhere. Uh, but, you know, you didn't have to do this in order to create it, because we're, we're actually going to make some changes in terms of this geometry. It's going to change a little bit from being a block. I uh, don't even want my second story conference room. And so you'll note that you may be able to use that to fulfill a lot of your needs. Uh, however, if you still just want to continue drawing, note that in 3D, I can do uh, I can do quite a few things in terms of stretching, uh, pushing and pulling. Basically, I'm just selecting these nodes here uh, so that I can um, you know, either grow this wall or shrink it right as necessary. I can bring it up or bring it down. So I have this kind of push pull uh, availability within 3D uh, as well. So I've got my second floor here, and as I noted, I didn't really want to have my conference room up there as well. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of a couple of these walls. And that may not be the case. You may just build it from scratch, and that's completely fine. Um, but you very quickly have transferred all of your elements. Uh, if you had dimensions, which we're going to do in a moment, you would have transferred those elements. And what we're seeing is just a reference, you know, just our chase, our trace reference coming around. And as far as editing our slab, you know, I can offset edges, add nodes, or I could have just built this from scratch, right? So uh, either way, uh, you get to work effectively uh, and efficiently in whatever uh, that you are doing. So let's continue to develop our model a little bit more. Um, I actually don't want my second floor to be a full floor here. Uh, so I will just take out a couple of these elements and then offset my slab. So I just want to show you editing in 2D, editing in 3D, we can still get uh, similar results uh, in how we work and how we operate. All right. So now we can start to see the below. Maybe we get rid of a couple walls. I hope you see where I'm going uh, with this. So um, we have our second story here. Let's continue to develop it a little bit more. Uh, we've talked about several types of windows, uh, but we haven't talked about one that most commonly people use, uh, which could be my curtain wall tool. So I just want to add a curtain wall, maybe element here. Uh, so I will choose an empty opening first, just to form the uh, the opening for what we had. So I can go into my door tool here. And I have one saved as a favorite. So empty openings are 
uh, you know, you could place on either floor, you could set this. Now, you don't have to do this stuff every time, and I just want to reiterate that point. Uh, but as a result, oops, uh, well, let's just apply this. Another thing I'll show you, we can select the favorite, uh, go to our door tool, select the one we want, select the one we have there, and then also apply those changes. So for the curtain wall, uh, and we can draw this in 2D or 3D, uh, but basically the system, first it decides, it's for you to decide where is the outside face, and then you can decide what the height of this element could be. So I'm going to do this in 2D as well, just to kind of work, talk about, you know, speak to some of our uh, workflow availability. So we're going to go down a story. We can use our control down or control minus to move between stories. But I'll select my curtain wall tool, draw its extent, and then I'll tell it how high I want to go. So maybe it goes 10 feet, maybe it goes 20 feet, maybe it's at an angle. I can define that. Uh, but within the curtain wall tool, I can define the system. So what that, came, that scheme is, is it glass? Uh, does it include partial elements? Do I need to add heights to it? Um, junctions, transom, mullion. So you can get pretty detailed, but you don't have to if you just want a basic curtain wall. So we can start to see that develop. And as far as editing, you can go into edit into 3D mode. And what you could do is turn off some of these other elements and then select the scheme itself and stretch it into place if that's what you need. So a lot of flexibility with this offsetting edges and kind of push and pull method uh, that we have as far as developing our model. So uh, we've got a little bit, we talked about our curtain wall tool. Uh, let's say we add a stair. So new in ARCHICAD 21, we introduced the stair tool. So I want to show you, you know, just tell you a little bit about how it works. Um, I just open up the explore command. Yes, you can zoom and orbit, but the explore is a way to make sure that you get into the model, maybe get to walk into it, see what you're doing. One other thing I mentioned or uh, that I need to change, that floor slab we copied up. Uh, I do need to make sure that it fits kind of my needs, so I'm probably going to choose a concrete and steel decking uh, to sit on my structure there. So the model is coming along. Now in the development of the stair, uh, and I can draw these in 2D, but we got a new overhaul on our stair tool. And basically it allows me to select every component of this stair to edit to get what I need. So it's a stair, we first define the system, how, how wide it is. We give it a sliding range and that gives it a little bit of flexibility, which we call predictive design technology. You know, maybe it's not this one exact thing, but you wanna fit this stair between the space. Uh, you can have it linked to particular levels. So as you're drawing, if you want to draw from the first floor to the second floor, you can do that. But within that, we define the system. So we're able to say, you know, maybe it's cantilevered, maybe it has beams. And we're able to control every single portion of this from the structure to the finishes that are available uh, to even the floor plan display what it looks like on every level on down to touching every single the, one of the numbers and moving them around if I want to. So there's a lot of work that's been put in into developing uh, our stair tool. So let's say we go back to our first floor plan just to see it. I want my, my first, I want my stair to be around this edge here. Uh, so we're going to select our stair and I'm just going to start drawing here. Uh, so it's very similar to other tools. I can use uh, a, oops, uh, I can use a construction line uh, in order to switch, you know, which side I'm working on if I want to. And you'll notice some of the flex in this stair. See, it's building every tread one step at a time. And you can build down to up or up to down. So that's why we got that going that way. So we could always change that around. So even if you don't know where you want it to end, but you know where you want it to start, uh, you can draw very simply there. So see, we got 19 stairs there, and uh, we got this cantilevered element, so that might be a decision that you make this wall a little bit thicker, right? Maybe a wall jip six and three quarters to accommodate some of those elements. So we've got our stair. Uh, let's go see it in 3D. 
and start to see that develop. Of course, we can use our surface painter in this mode too if we want to start developing these, these elements to fit. But we can very quickly create our stairs. We also introduced our railing tool. Uh, our railing tool is uh, also very similar in that you have control over all the segments and all the elements that you create. Basically, you create a pattern uh, based off of these, and you can have custom profiles in order to do that. But uh, let's just place it. Yes, I can click on uh, any of these elements, uh, but I could also magic wand to apply it very quickly to my stair. And it is associative with my stair. So if something changes about my stair, uh, it's going to also uh, change my railing element. So associative railings uh, and stair shapes. Now, uh, now we talked a little bit about the, the stair, but this is just a plain stair. I want to kind of jump out the box for a moment, a little bit more on the stair, since that's what we introduced in 21, and it really is a unique technology. Uh, I'm going to uh, just draw with this simple stair. And uh, right now, this it had it set up for automatic landing if I wanted it. But, you know, due to space needs or, or more rather, uh, some existing projects, you may want to introduce some winders into your stair to make them fit. And so even drawing with our uh, winders is just a matter of me clicking. You want to zoom in and make sure you are where you need to be. But as soon as I turn my, turn my mouse there, it's going to make that turn for me. Now, it's, you're about to get to see this predict, the predictive design technology at work. So if, based off of my parameters, it has trouble uh, conceiving my stare, uh, it'll ask me, well, did you want to do one of these things? Uh, and it'll tell you what it changed. Maybe it adjusted a length. Maybe it added a landing. Uh, but at any rate, no matter how you work, no matter how you design, uh, you can get uh, your results with the stair tool. So it too has the same controls as my pet palette uh, in terms of the shapes that we can create. So right now I watched it turn. And we can create that stair. So you can go and see that in 3D uh, as well. Use our explore command. So there's a lot that there's a lot that we can start to develop. Of course, we don't want that window there, uh, you know, but we can get rid of that. But we can use these tools to very quickly get started. Now, I'm going to build a little bit of a slab element over this. You note that I got uh, I, I I got rid of some of my slab, uh, so I can either take the existing slab and add on to it. So that's what we'll do. We'll just add it to our column lines here. And this one, I might add in a node so that it can reach my stair there. Very quickly, we we're able to work here. Rails can also be associated with uh, your slab elements as well. So you're not just limited to any one of those tools. So uh, let's do this. We got a little bit of time here, about 15, 20 minutes. You'd be surprised at what I achieved during that time. So we've got a basic structure, but remember our massing. Uh, you know, I did just magic wand these walls in. They're the same height. You can always take them and push on their nodes, push and pull on their nodes to change their height. You can type to enter uh, that height as needed. Uh, so you're not limited uh, in anything that you do. So now that we've done that, I want to talk a little bit about our roof. Uh, let me add that second floor wall there. So you'll see tab system and navigator really becomes my friend. That trace reference is a quick shortcut. I can turn it off. I can change its opacities. I can do a lot of cool things with that trace reference. Um, but let's build our uh, roof. So in building our roof element, I probably want to know what's going on on my second floor, so I'll show that as a trace reference. I also can, with the roof tool, uh, just so you understand, uh, there are ArchiCAD, you can build any shape and it'll figure out a roof for it. So that means that with my multiplane geometry, I could use any geometry method. Oops, I don't want it to cross, but any curves and figure out a roof for what that looks like. It just went above, uh, but we should see it out here. 
So it'll figure out a roof for you for any shape. So with that said, uh, I could come here and simply magic wand, select my roof tool, and then space bar and click. Uh, and I want to make sure that it's in the right place uh, because we can affect its story level. So I don't, I just wanted to start right at um, my foot there. And uh, using this method, I could trace, uh, like literally draw the shape, or I could also spacebar click to form a roof. Uh, if you wanted a flat plane roof or a single plane roof, you could also go back and build that very quickly and easily as well. So we have a little bit of something for everyone. So you first must define your pivot point, which, which, which direction it's going to be pitching up from, you know, which, which side is it actually going to be moving from, and then you can draw your shape, either any shape you want or it could be a rectangle. And there are shortcuts for this, I just want you guys to see where I'm clicking. So depending on what you want, uh, as a system or as a single plane roof, uh, you can change the pitch of this roof to whatever you need. Uh, as a system, you can have it work together. Uh, but we can get pretty much any results with this unique organic way that we can create any of our roofs. So let's take a look at things that have been happening in the background. You know what we've been developing? As a result of views that I already suggested. Now part of these are in the, the template. As I mentioned, you might want to develop your template to, to, to anticipate your needs. But one of the things that's happening in the background, well, all my construction documents are where they need to be. They're doing what they need to do. I have elevation, and I'll turn off my trace reference. Uh, I have elevations that are being generated. Uh, I have materials and quantity schedules uh, that are being generated. And this updating, that's pretty much like the first time that you'll, you'll have to wait just a little bit. Uh, and that's simply, you know, just the results of... Um, Wait, you know, getting the first cue that we're, we're actually going to be looking on it. Uh, we can also take a look at our schedules. It's forming schedules, window schedules, door schedules. We can add room schedules. We're going to put in some furniture. So that's the intelligence of the I and the BIM is that I know this is happening. I'm building my model, but I'm also simultaneously developing the data that I need to, to create my construction documents. All right, so let's do this. We're also going to... Uh, annotate our models a little bit. So let's go to our floor plan. I can uh, go in and individually dimension all of these elements, right? Just like the way that I can trace. I can do that. I can go point by point uh, and choose uh, the information that I want. You know, maybe it's inside or outside the building. I can do that. But what we can get automatically, I'm going to select all of my exterior walls. So remember our find and select, our control F. And this is a criteria we can save. We can have criteria that always picks this up. And then we'll select all of those. And we have an automatic dimensioning tool. So I'm going to go to document exterior dimensioning. You can choose the level of detail that you want within this uh, dimensioning uh, process, whether you want several of these strings or all of them, you can choose nominal hole size, wall hole size, center, a lot. Uh, if you want to measure by the core elements, our framing or our CMU, you can do that. Uh, and then we want to place it on all sides of our model. So all it takes is giving it a direction, telling it which direction my building is running, and then clicking once in order to place all of my dimensions. Now you'll know, you probably haven't uh, seen it just yet, but we are also simultaneously creating schedules. The schedules are not just static data. Uh, they also deal with changes in your model. So if you decide to, and we have several types of schedules, you have more detailed schedules and less detailed schedules. Uh, I think I can also change, change the value row, right? So that they fit. It's just like a, an Excel in terms of how we can uh, edit these elements. You'll see I've got automatic dimensions on it. But if I make a change here, guess what? It changes everywhere within my model, everywhere, every instance. And if you wanted to check, your dimensions are working with that as well. 
So that gives you a dynamic opportunity to change IDs, sizes, uh, but just to make sure that everything is always updated uh, within your project set. So let's get to those elevations and let's do some notations there. So we'll open up one elevation here. I believe maybe my north elevation would be good. So it has some doors. So we can start to see it develop. Maybe let's try for our west elevation. You can always double click your scroll wheel to zoom exempt. I have some set up so that you can see colors, others that are not. Those are things that you can also turn or on or off or use uh, at, at any time while you're within ARCHICAD. Uh, so in notating this, I have a label tool, which means I have an independent label. We expect that you can do these things where you want to type information. And that might be you simply coming out here and saying, hey, this is a brick wall. Uh, however, because we've used these intelligent components, I can also pick up a good amount of information from it. Uh, so we have skin list, uh, which will tell you everything about what's in this element. Probably want to get it a little bit uh, away from my markers there, but we can always change our size. So for all those composites, I'm able to see that information. Uh, I might just want to see a window ID, right? So in speaking about developing our schedules, uh, as I'm numbering these or changing these elements, of course, I might center them. Uh, but I can click on these elements. If I happen to change the numbering, changes everywhere in the schedule. And now in my, in my, in my label, that's picking up information. So let's do one more, and then we'll align these. You might also choose to pick up a surface. I think um, we have um, our alignment set off, but we can always change that. You can take all of these at once and say adjust them so that they are aligned. These markers are hard coded in, but I can always turn them off within the elevation settings. So I hope I'm not getting too deep. Uh, but these are, uh, excuse me, these are the ways uh, that we can begin to use uh, ARCHICAD to our advantage to pull out a lot of information. And this also means that if my composite changes, it knows that it needs to update that information, unlike our static uh, information. So a lot of intelligence that we can gain there. Uh, now, there are a couple sections that are preset uh, in our uh, template, but let's take a look at what's happening there. We can open up our section and we can also create them. It's just like drawing a line. We want to open that up and we can start to see our section developing. Uh, if we want to take a look at a wall section, and, and, and I'll create one from scratch. Basically, we have our section tool. I can come define my parameters, define which direction I'm looking in. Until I place this on my layout sheet in my construction document set, it's just waiting, waiting for information. So I can start to see my model uh, develop. Now, uh, in relationship to what's happening here in the layout book, how quickly you can create these. Uh, layout books work off of masters. Uh, so if we take a look at this master, I believe these are using my ARCD 24 by 30. This could be you. You can drag and drop JPEGs, the logos in here. There's an amount of auto text that's being uh, actually utilized where you can come into your project info, enter that information, and you know begin to update it everywhere that that information is needed. So we can add that to our development. But once again, all the construction documents that it's creating. And I also took the courtesy of kind of uh, setting up some views for our massing model that still exists uh, that we can call out at any time. Uh, we can set up cutaway models. We can set up different views to show how, how we'd like to look at it. I can look at it this way. I can look at it at the other way. Uh, but we can add more and more information. Uh, for my roof, I might want to add an overhang so I can offset all edges. So you have a lot of flexibility in how you edit. Um, we can add details or we can override them temporarily. Either way, 
whatever it is that you need uh, for your model, be it in schematic design uh, or be it in construction documents, you can start to achieve these elements. Now, I did mention that um, uh, we just to create a new view, they work off of these masters just to show you how create how easy you can do it. I can add it to a folder, add a layout, name it. Uh, let's say I have a drawing here. It's working off a of master. It's actually working off of F now. Or you can have grid systems put up in here. Uh, but you really can just come and grab and drag and drop elements to be shown into your screen. They come in with a number, a scale. And guess what? Things like these markers here, the automatic numbering that's happening is a lifesaver. Uh, how many interns do we have that don't seem to care about these type of things, you know, making sure that this is updated? Uh, it knows how to number itself based on what folder it's in. So even if this elevation page moves, you see it becomes 104. Well, guess what? Now my, my marker also updates with that information. So with the last time that I have left, I want to talk about some of the takeaways that you get uh, from ARCHICAD, uh, one of which is rendering. Uh, capabilities, the other which is BIMX. So remember I started by saying you could batch publish this to PDF. You can also batch publish your project to BIMX. So just give me a moment. I'm going to connect to my uh, tablet here. And it works on your phone, your tablet, Android, or i uh, devices. So you can export in one click your project to BIMX. And what that gives you, number one, you might always be ready for presentation, no matter where you are. You'll have a portfolio, of, kind of like a ready-made portfolio. Uh, but we can go into our project. We have that full documentation set, or you can limit it. You can add your own logo and branding and website materials. Uh, and you have your entire 3D model that you can either look around by moving one finger to kind of move and, and rotate around. You can use two fingers to zoom, very similar to what we're already used to in our uh, cell phone navigation. Uh, but let's take a look. Give your clients an opportunity to walk through the model. Uh, this is kind of a first-person shooter uh, option where you can select any of these elements and kind of walk through them. You can also get intelligence out of that. So that floor, what is it made of? Floor. Hard, uh, hardwood and concrete and how thick it is. And so you get not just a 3D model and the opportunity to explore, uh, but you also have something that uh, is easily marketable, uh, that gives you information and also carries the documentation along with it. So we'll go ahead and come on up these stairs and you see it does take note of gravity. And so it's just a wonderful presentation tool, but don't forget, you still have all of your documentation. And if it's a little bit delayed, it is because of GoToMeeting. I do encourage you all to go to your Play Store uh, and try to download BIMX today. Uh, but this is what we wanted. You know, we have our information. We're able to see our cover sheet. We can add in our general notes uh, as needed. And it's a linked document. Also, when you say about PDFs, they're linked. So they're still linked to all the documentation. You know, I can come here, take a look, oh, and say, oh, either that relates to one of my diagrams I created or one of my sections. Now, you didn't do anything to create this. All you had to do was open that model. So as a result of that, you know, this is an authoring uh, device. It's not an editing device. Uh, so, you know, don't feel that uh, you can send this to someone so that they can make changes. But you can add all of the detail that you need scroll through your project or have even a presentation set, uh, which I will introduce here in a moment, starting where we started off with that massing, still having your sketch and documentation uh, within your model. And so very quickly, and that's often where we, we, we lose time, you know, we want to get our portfolio out, but we, we're really concerned about our construction documents. So ARCHICAD is this all-in-one environment where I can begin to uh, develop uh, my tool, develop my model in a very intelligent fashion from schematic uh, to um, construction documents and still uh, have the freedom that I need in order to design and create. 
So while I'm answering, answering a couple questions, I'm just going to start up the rendering uh, portion here. And then I'll open it up to look at some questions. That will end our session today promptly at 1. But for those of you guys who want to stick around, uh, feel free. So we'll just start a couple of renderings here. Uh, within the rendering engine, we have a center render, very sophisticated rendering engine. I just have a couple of general settings. So note that you can render without lamps. We have lamps you can place. You can begin to do that. But let's do a couple uh, because you can render and still go back into your project. And so that's why I'm going to let these work uh, while we uh, answer some questions here. So we have some sketch renderings. And I'll just start one more. And uh, for those of you who are still here before you leave, I have shown you a lot. And there's a lot that you could achieve in this program. Uh, but one of the things that we strive for, Graphisoft, we're very hands-on with our clients. And so it's our job to figure out what you want to achieve. What is your goal so that we can set you off in the right directions. And BIM consultants like, ourself, like myself, are just looking forward to the opportunity to help you get better acquainted with the software. Uh, so um, we'll, we'll let those uh, renderings get started. I'll come back and watch it. And let me take a look and see some of our questions here. So are we going to explore uh, how to import a SketchUp file? Yes, definitely. So importing a SketchUp file is as easy as dragging and dropping it. Now, I've started this rendering on that file. Now, you'll notice I also have two instances of ARCHICAD open, uh, which is very um, you know, useful for me. So you will have saved it from the uh, library, wherever, wherever you got it from, or your, your Google warehouse. Uh, and then you can just drag it and drop it uh, into the view. So I've downloaded a couple. Mm, there we see here. I can just drag it and drop it into ARCHICAD. Now it does not come in as an intelligent object in terms of being parametric and being able to understand how it stretches, uh, but you can very quickly get it in here. So. Uh, usually, if this process, if this wheel is spinning for about three minutes, that's not the object for you. We know a lot of objects, uh, we know a lot of uh, components can have uh, very, um, uh, can be very polygon heavy. Uh, so you just want to be careful with uh, your selection here. So we'll give that a second. Let me let's see if I can catch a couple more of these questions here. So uh, we can take additional steps to clean up the object uh, to make it look a little bit better. I'll show you what it looks like in 3D. Take our marquee tool just to see only that element in 3D. And we can bring in our SketchUp components and change its surfaces using the Surface player, um, Painter. Uh, question, how did I do layer? Uh, so for creating layers, uh, we have our layer system, Command or Control L. Uh, this will bring up my layer dialog box. So let me go back to plan just so that we can see a little bit clearly. So layers are created. I can create them new very easily, but they should be assigned to a combination so that my, my pre-placed filtered views know what they're looking at. So I can create a new layer very quickly here. I might have a new combination. Basically, the way this works, is it locked? Can I see it? Is it wireframe? Uh, if it is showing in this combination, you'll see an eyeball there. If it's not, then you won't. So for instance, the morph uh, or my new layer isn't available in these combinations. I can update it here, and then every plan that's using that new combination will now be able to see that new layer. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, how are you able to import another floor plan to the second floor? Uh, so if you're talking about uh, de import, I'd like you to expound. If you mean how to create another second floor, uh, if it's just about another DWG file or reference file, you can create another worksheet to use that as a trace reference. Feel free to expound on that, and I may, may have time to answer a little bit more. Oh, I see the end. Like, if you have another unit design for that second floor. Uh, a different unit, you mean like instead of the edit elements by stories, I presume? 
so even in creating new stories, um, we need to go to our story seven, which is command seven or control seven. So that's how we create the additional levels. Uh, once we are on that floor, I can just draw as such. Now things like my walls, well, since I'm here, they know that they start on the second floor. And I mentioned that they are linked before between floors. They don't have to be. Uh, you can they can be whatever size that you want. You can link them up several stories, but you could simply just go to the level and either start tracing or just start drawing uh, whatever you need for your second floor. Uh, how do you manage design alternatives in my example? Uh, so there is the I guess the easy way and the hard way, right? Uh, there are, <laughs> uh, we can do a lot of that through layer combinations. So just like um, I noted that these saved views uh, that are pre-placed are using these layer combinations we just talked about, I'd create a whole other layer combination called option one or option two. Now, uh, one thing for those of you who are here, if you're still here, that's great, but this will be recorded. Um, you know, the, the, the renovation filter can be pretty useful. And I know what you're thinking, it's not renovation, but the renovation filter basically assigns a status to a status to elements. And as a result of it, I can determine what it looks like in any particular view. So um, just to show you how my renovation filter kind of works here, um, and you don't have to set this up, but basically it, it's a system that gives me show, show, and hide, or show, show, and override. Whereas in demo, if I establish something to be demo, it's gonna show up red and dash, that's that override. So I can also add several filters, um, and then within the, and maybe I'm getting a little deep, uh, but I'd be happy to share a screen with you. Uh, but within every element where we're choosing it, uh, we have a dialog box for renovation filter, but then there's this option show on renovation filters. So from that, I can say, well, only show this stuff on option one or only show it on option two. Those are not hard coded into the template, but you can uh, also create that. Uh, let's see, we got another question there. Let's take a peek in on some of our rendering. So that's my sketch rendering is done. And even with the sketch rendering options, you can affect the color, the line overstretch. This is my general purpose rendering. So within three minutes, with no lamps, no real settings, I'm able to render pretty well. Uh, but there are other settings uh, for the detail renderer, as well as the person who knows absolutely nothing about it. So if I could just give you a preview there, uh, the photo rendering settings box. Uh, basically, we have several engines, sketch engine, center render. You don't really want to use basic if you have center render, but we provide you with a number of pre-selected pre, uh, scenes. You can save them where uh, within this option you are, so I'll switch to center render. Within center render, we have detail settings and non, so for the easy person, they can come in here, bump up lights, bump up sun or illuminated surfaces and then define a sky. So this is not just an image, but an actual uh, thing that deals with shadows uh, and how things are portrayed within your model, maybe based off of your location. And then if you're a detailed person, oriented person, we have something for you. If you know about caustics, global, uh, global illumination, occlusion, we have something for everyone. Uh, but very quick renderings you can get. Of course, we can get better results with more time. Uh, one other question here. Um, Got to expand that. So I already did that one. How far back uh, can you bring twenty one? Can you bring it to twenty one with an older project? Um, for those of you who are using older versions of ArchiCAD, uh, there are uh, we're pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, I hate to use such a word as that, but about um, compatibility between them now. What we can't account for is any custom objects that you made. I recently had a guy coming from ArchiCAD 10, and he's like, why aren't my objects working? We're on ArchiCAD 21, so I can't guarantee those things. Uh, but ArchiCAD 21 can natively open files back to ArchiCAD 10, and if you have files before that, uh, we have a couple of converters. Uh, basically, you have to bring it into 10. There was a significant change there. 
Uh, so if you have any pre uh you can uh, we have converters that you can bring uh, in in order to accomplish that. Uh, how do you create a room finish plan schedule? Where's the information pulled from? All right, and so for those of you who are wondering how long I'm going to go, it's I'm about to go five more minutes, and then I'll answer some of these other questions. Uh, but for that room schedule, so uh, this one, of course, we already finished this model, right? Uh, and I did that on purpose for the sake of time. It just becomes impossible to get all of that detail in. Um, but, however, just to show you how they're created from scratch, uh, we have our zone tool, uh, and it's not just a room tag. It is a 3D component, so it understands height, um, volume. We have a energy modeling capability within the air. I'm not going to show that here today, but it'll take some cues from that as well. So we can come and form our spaces uh, either from... Uh, drawing our boundaries here and placing a tag, or we can also uh, pick up the boundaries of spaces as well. And so one thing that's already set up uh, for, that I set up for this demo, as far as my schedules are concerned, uh, we also have a, a room schedule. And if I were to place an object uh, within this space, so let's say we have some, a chair or a toilet, let's, let's not press a toilet within the uh, conference room here, uh, but we can replace it. It was on a hidden layer. As we place that element, uh, the, furni uh, the furniture and equipment schedules are also um, picking up some information from that. So you can use zones um, to, to create those type of schedules. Uh, what is the best way to quickly model massing on ArchiCAD? So once again, just go back to my morph tool. And I did, we went a little bit of roundabout way because we talked about if you start with sketches or lines, and I really wanted to cover the, cover the gambit just to let you guys know you really can't get started just about any way here. Uh, but we have our morph tool. So let's say we had nothing. And I'm just going to show it because I, I hit it. So remember that we drew that over there. Uh, but I can come and form a face and push and pull. Now, it's sensitive to those story heights. So even this element as it is, if there's a floor plate cut through that, it knows the square footage per plate there. So if it's not a square, uh, you might uh, also choose to uh, form a face uh, either by, by drawing it right, uh, rectangular, or we can draw all of my line segments. These are also ways to get 3D lines. Uh, but at any rate, you can come and start massing. And people also use uh, the morph tool for um, uh, for massing as well as for create uh, custom object creation. Oop, there we go. And uh, if you're wondering, just for, oh, I have a invisible go to meeting panel that's blocking my dialog box uh, that I'm looking for. There we go, my pet palette. So I can always come and come come and push and pull and mass in that way. Uh, yes, the presentation will be recorded. Uh, MEP needs. Uh, we do have an MEP modeler uh, for it is a, a specific add-on that has all those components. It's a separate purchase from ArchiCAD. You might be interested in that. Uh, just a couple more with the time I have left. I do apologize. I'm trying to get all of it. Uh, trust work and parapets. I think that'll be a good one. And uh, then I'll have to wrap it up. But I did see one. Uh, because we have your email information, we will be able to get you this recording. So for any custom elements that you don't see, any custom elements, and, and this will be a good one in closing. So thank you for those of you who have, who have stuck around here. So let's say we have just our brick wall. And we didn't quite get into it exactly, only that it was a composite. But we can manipulate every composite by building materials. So it lets me know brick is this thick, CMU is that thick. But this is a little bit limited in that, you know, what about those complex details? What about parapets or things like that? So we have also the uh, complex profile tool. So in the complex profile, I am able to draft in a 2D manner, or in this case, for the sake of time, I'm going to capture this. So this is a section view. This is a, cut, a section cut through it. And uh, it's really because of scale that you can't see that brick pattern anymore. Uh, but 
Um, this breaks itself into fields. So this is brick, insulation, we model airspace, all of that good stuff. So for whatever you want to detail, and this might also be good for getting any of your custom elements, uh, any of your details, your, your standard details, if you want to see them in 3D. So watch this. Very quickly, I'm going to uh, draft in a 2D environment. Just want to make sure. Well, let me start over. So you want to select the field. Uh, you want to select the field that has the building material that you need. So we will choose concrete walls in place. I can begin to draft. I have editing, uh, drafting techniques while I'm working. And editing is as simple as we've already been showing you, pushing and pulling, uh, offsetting edges. So what I'm about to do is create a foundation detail very quickly. Yes, we are in a 2D environment. However, uh, this will be transferred over to our 3D model. So just doing a little bit of drafting. And let's go ahead and add our footing. Of course, I'm not going to be exact. Uh, but we can either apply this to be one wall. I might, but in reality, I would chop this down so that um, so you can uh, so that we can see just so that we could build just with that element, right? I don't want to build a wall with all of it, but I do want to use this to build. So I might store that element and start to use it uh, within my model. Now, as far as uh, our current wall, if we take a look at it in 3D, because we did apply it. So uh, just by 2D drafting, I'm able to get that information. So part of the complex profiles, you'll see within the template, we have a couple eaves and parapets. You just need to draft it. We also have some steel structures. So that will be my last question today. Thank you guys so much for your patience and sticking around. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free. We will be contacted. You will be connected with your local uh, Archicad representative. However, please download a trial at tryarchicad.com. Or if you have any questions, be sure to check out our help center uh, at helpcenter.graphisoft.com. Thank you guys so much, and you have a wonderful day. I hope to see you using Archicad very soon.